Good afternoon and welcome to the National Basketball Arena. Ball's about to go up in the air for the under 19 B All Island Schools League Cup uh, League Final. Sorry, it's between Kloster and Neskelga, who are in all green and score the first basket of the game. And St. Patrick's Grammar School's Mama, who are in the green and white. Goes to starting fives in a minute, but I'm joined for this one by Ulster University's head coach. Pat O'Neill. Pat, we had a couple of good games already today. This one looks like it might be a good one as well. Yeah, I was talking to coaches prior to the game and, you know, they both feel pretty confident. Uh, Klosh and Skella had one injury worry coming in with one of their starters tweaked his ankle, so he's actually on the bench and, and will come in a little bit later. Um, but for uh, St. Patrick's uh, Academy, they're, they're hungry for this one. They've uh, played well in their qualifiers and, and getting there in the playoffs and um, they're looking forward to an exciting contest. Zag Zagrakalis that gets his own rebound off the missed shot and gets St. Patrick's first score of the game, tied at two. Eight minute quarters in these games, so we're down to seven minutes to go. O'Connor looks to drive, kicks it out to O'Shea, who takes a long two, foot in the line, doesn't go but rebounded by Galvin. Missed shot by Ty O'Connor, and it'll be St. Patrick's ball. So Fanthorpe sets things up. St. Patrick's inside, early to McLean, a nice pass, or a nice fake and drive by Michael McLean, and he'll go to the line with a chance to put St. Patrick's in the lead. That's the first foul of the game. For number 10, Cahill O'Shea. <laughs> nice crowd in the arena today, supporting both teams. Some good crowds already today, Pat. Good, good atmosphere here in the arena today. Yeah, it really started off well, you know, for that under 16 girls final uh, place was hopping with uh, manor house and close to breed uh, two dubbing teams and they brought plenty of supporters so it really set the tone and then uh, yesterday the second game the one that just finished was a cracker so uh, complete reverse of the results from the cup final and it was great to see st patrick's academy from dungannon pull that one out um, and really exciting game right down to the wire tigo connor with a three-point shot good for Kolosna Skelga, a good block from the same player, O'Connor there. Three-point shot up from Zagrakalis, doesn't go. But St. Patrick's have been excellent on the offensive boards in the early goal, and they'll get another shot here, it's McLean and... Nice pass, and McLean and his call for a late foul there. Probably the right call, I think, caught him on the arm. So it'll be... William Galvin will go to the line for two shots and coach John Tierney wants to talk things over with an early timeout. So 5.44 to go in the first quarter. Good start, scoring-wise, 5-4. There's a chance for Kloshna Skelga to add to their tally. 
Pat, good start to the game for both teams, both on the scoreboard, so both coaches will be fairly happy, I'd imagine, at the moment. Yeah, and, uh, you know, it's a bit of nerves, so both these teams, it's uh, Klosch and Skellige's first time at this level, getting to the final, and uh, from St. Pat's, it's been a while since they've been here at the arena competing in a final, so they'll be happy that the nerves are settling pretty quickly. St. Pat's won't be happy with having given up that rebound. And it's Tyro Connor gets back-to-back -back baskets there. He adds to his tally. Inside to McLean. Nice pass, but can't finish. Another basket for Oliver. And we're going to get a foul. It's going against number 10, Carl O'Shea. That's going to be his second personal foul. Bit of action below us on the bench. They're going to look to try and get him out. And they do. So it will be O'Shea replaced by number 12, Austin Murphy. Donaghy just misread things with Zagrakalis and be a turnover and Kolosnes Gelga ball good ball movement drive again from O'Connor he's had a fast start nearly counts but he'll go to the line for two shots he's been impressive early on Pat yeah he's done a good job with the uh, good pump fake to get the defense out of stance and then he's done a good job of getting into the paint and drawing contact that's going to be uh, McLennan's second personal. So that'll be a bit of a worry for St. Pat's Academy. He's one of the main threats for them inside. So head coach Matthew McLennan, which I presume is probably his father. Decides to leave him in. Probably knows him better than anybody. Missed free throws, rebounded by Zagrakalis. Into the key from Fanthorpe. Nice pass again. Good job of blocking the shot. But Fenton Oliver's found himself in a nice couple of positions inside. But so far, the scale have done a good job of stopping him getting the easy two. Fanthorpe kicks it out to McLean. McLean, good hands from O'Connor. Somehow O'Connor's pass finds its way <laughs> into the hands of Galvin and Galvin up off the backboard and in for two. Yeah, pretty amazing score there now. He was well off balance but, you know, focused enough to get the ball on target and let the backboard do the rest for it. So 4.20 to go in the first quarter. 10-4. Kloschner Skelga lead. Basket required here for St. Patrick's Gamma just to give them a little bit of confidence. But that one's come off and rebounded by Clifford. Galvin, three-point shot is up from O'Connor. And his fast start continues with another three, and it's 13-4. I think Matthew McLean just asking the table for a timeout, so he wants to talk things over at the next opportunity. Hopefully he'll be taking it with a basket, which he does. Good score on the offensive rebound by Fenton Oliver. We're going to get a travel here from William Galvin and that will give us time for a timeout.
Welcome back. 13 6 the score, 340 to go in the first quarter. It'll be St. Patrick's ball. It'll be Joseph Fanthorpe brings things up. Fanthorpe to St. Quillis inside to McGleanan. He gets three bodies around him, but Fanthorpe does a nice job of creating him some space on the baseline. That one doesn't go, but great rebound by St. Quillis. Kicks it out to the open Donaghy. Good defence from Kloshna Skelga. Donaghy down the lane, a nice finish. And back-to-back -back scores for St. Patrick's. Much needed two scores there, Pat. Yeah, it was going to drift away a little bit the way O'Connor was shooting for Kloshna Skelga, so it was good to see them uh, get a couple of scores just to keep them ticking in. And that's a big three-point shot by their captain, Sean Tian. Again, they've been red hot from the three-point line. That's their third three-point shot already with only less than five minutes gone. Good hustle from uh, Tian, sorry, but it will remain St. Patrick's ball. 16-8, 2.40 to go in the first quarter. Something you know you're going to get from Tian, bearing in mind who his dad is. The infamous, or sorry, I meant to say famous, John Tian. Yeah, uh, you had many a battle with him, Matt. I did. A superstar for the Tralee teams in my early years here and probably well before I even arrived. In fact, John played well into his 40s, I think. I remember him playing, actually scoring 40-something, close to 50 maybe for St. Mary's in a Division One final here when he was well into his 40s. Phenomenal athlete. And I'm sure the way Sean started, he'll be no different. And nice fake inside and two-point shot from... Fenton Oliver just keeping St. Patrick's in it. They've got it within three here with two minutes to go after a couple of nice scores. Yeah, they've done a good job there in transition and, and knocked down that open three when they had the opportunity as well. So it's Clifford for three and that's in and out. So certainly we've seen from the uh, Klosh and the Skelga, they've got some three-point shooters. They've already got two different players that have made one and that one looked very close as well. Uh, they've done a good job of getting into paint, uh, St. Pat's Academy, unlucky in that opportunity, but you can see that's their game plan, is to push it inside. They've switched to a zone now, and that's kind of slowed Klosh and Skellige down a little bit in relation to, as we see them get a steal out of it as well. Zagra Callis with a steal. Chance to tie or bring it to his win one here. Into the corner, we'll try and tie it with a three-point shot from Fanthorpe. Doesn't go, but well rebounded by Oliver, who gets the ball back eventually. Zagra Callis, he'll try and knock down a three, and he does exactly that, and we've a tied game with a minute to go in the first quarter at 16 apiece. Good patient offense there, waited for the open look when the defense had sagged in a little bit, and uh, nice form and finishing that. <laughs> nice steal across the baseline, but it couldn't. Keep the ball inbound, step out of bounds, step back inbounds to pick it up. So it'll be close to the ball. I don't know about that one, Matt. I thought he did a great job of stepping back inbounds and then touching the ball. Yeah, I'm never quite sure on the rule. I don't think you're allowed to be the first person to touch it when you've been out of bounds, but I could stand corrected on that one. Baseline jump shot. Austin Murphy is good. He gets his first bucket of the game and puts... Colossian Skelliger back in the lead, 18-16, with just 24 seconds to go in the first quarter. Dago Carlis inside to McLennan. This is Banthorpe. Still 12 seconds on the clock. That pass is not going to count. Got a foul before the shot. The foul's on number nine, Tag O'Connor. That's uh, Ty O'Connor, sorry, that's going to be his first. With 12 seconds on the game clock in the first quarter. Fanthorpe looking in space in the key, gets all the way to the basket, can't get it to go and rebounded by Clifford. There's five seconds on the clock. Tian has the ball, he's gonna launch it from deep. That's not a million miles away. <laughs> and nothing but net from a foot over half court from Sean Tian and he puts the tremendous finish to the quarter for Kloshna Skelga, they lead 21-16.
So in the first quarter, Pat, thoroughly exciting first quarter, actually good scoring, 21-16 at the end of it. What impressed you the most between the two teams there? Well, I think the confidence in taking those three-point looks and, and then obviously the ability to knock them down. Uh, you know, both teams switched into a 3-2 zone, which can make it tough for shooters, but they've uh, stuck to their game plan and, and found a bit of space and knocked it down. Michael McLean, the first basket of the second quarter there with a nice running hook inside. Here is Tian, this time he puts the ball on the floor, gets the basket, doesn't finish with the right hand, but rebounded and tipped in by Ronan Clifford. Banthorpe to Zagri Zagricalis. Get his name eventually. I thought I had it for a while. I was a bit overconfident with it, but eventually good rebound and put in from Joseph Banthorpe, and we're back to within three. Clifford. Sheehan for another three. This one's closer. That one's going to drop out, but good hustle and save by Clifford. We'll give Klaus and Skellige another opportunity. Nice whip through from O'Connor. But it's rebounded by McGlynn and he almost makes a nice pass, but he might get it back. He doesn't rebound, uh, stolen away by Tian. Three on two here for Klaus and Skellige. Nice fake, but can't finish. And a rebound goes into the hands of Oliver. 6.30 to go, second quarter. Fansorp on top of the key. That one's tipped from Tian and stolen away eventually by Clifford. Galvin with a fall away jump shot, not quite on balance there. And it's cleaned up by Oliver. Fansorp finds a bit of space, gets into the key. Nice pass and great finish by Fenton Oliver. I mentioned he got blocked a couple of times early, but it was in good positions in the last couple. He's been able to evade the defense and put them in. And with one point game here. <laughs> Carlo Shea puts it back to three point game. Nice touch off the glass, 25-22. Inside to Oliver, Oliver, great footwork inside, but can't finish, rebounded. McGlennan, two contrasting styles here, Pat. A lot of inside scores you mentioned for St. Patrick's and a good, some good outside shooting by Klaus and Skelga. Yeah, they're playing to their strengths, uh, which is good to see, and, and both teams are looking to try and take advantage of that. But you have to say, you know, Klaus and Skelga are doing a good job of moving the ball around and, and getting those looks. And then the two twin force of... McLenahan and Oliver are tough inside. Timeout call with 5.12 to go. So we'll come back, 25-24, Colossus Gelga lead against St. Patrick's Grammar School from Armagh. 25-24, 5-10 to go. Good defense from McGlennon, means there's a travel there. Fansorp, Zagricalis. He gets it inside to McLean. A nice passing 
But good defense, staying in front of the ball from Klos and Skelga. Open three-point shot from Van Thor, bouncing around, but great rebound by McLean, and he can't make it, and a rebound by Oliver, and he's fouled from behind. I think it's going to go on nine, it is. Number nine, Ty O'Connor. He'll pick up his second foul. And Coach John Tien wants to talk things over, and they'll have a timeout. back still a one-point game here 424 to go Been an excellent game so far both teams been scoring fairly freely but mixed in with some good defensive patches as well and Oliver knocks down both to give St. Patrick's the lead Good defense at the basket by Oliver as well. And here comes McLennan. Oh, nice dish off to Zagotales, and he finishes the basket. A little bit of a run here from St. Patrick's Grammars with halfway through this second quarter. O'Connor, he got off the first fast start with a couple of baskets. Hasn't scored in a while. That one's going to bounce out. Rebounded by Oliver, who's coming into the game more and more. Here comes Zagracalis. McLean. Stolen away from behind by Tian. Tian well blocked at the basket by Oliver. Pass just gets away from Donahue in the corner. And it would be Klos and Skelliger's ball. Tian to Galvin. Back to T uh, eventually back to Tian. Tian will take another three. Made that huge one at the end of the first quarter. But that one's bounced out. And we have a foul on the rebound. Push from behind from Carl O'Shea. Pat, so who's impressed you so far in this one? Yeah, you'd have to say O'Connor. You know, he's had um, 11 points in that first quarter for Klaus and Skellige and also Tihin, who hit those two deep threes, the crazy one, which was <laughs> just above four feet inside the halfway line. Uh, and then on the other side, McLenahan and uh, the point guard, uh, Zag Zagri Callas, has been very good for St. Patrick's. There is that man, McLennan. His authority inside, he picked up two early fouls, been done a great job so far of dominating inside. And as we were talking there, the third foul went on Carlo Shea for Kolosna Skelga. To the frustration for himself there, Joseph Thanthorpe can't finish inside, but it's a five-point lead that St. Patrick's Grammar School have built up. With just over two minutes to go in this first quarter. Three is off by O'Connor. We'll have another chance here. Corner shot by Murphy. Doesn't go and foul. It's going to go against Joseph 
Van Dorp, that's going to be his first. Clifford, elbow jump shot, that one bounced out, swept up by McLean, and he's facing in front of him, he's going to look to attack here. Oh, good defense by Clifford, steals the ball away from him. Tian with a little stop and go, right hand off the glass. Things just bouncing out of late for Klosner Skelga. Yeah, they're still getting good looks, to, you know, to, as you said, just the ball isn't dropping in for them. Uh, you know, I'm sure coach John Tian will be telling them that at half time when he gets them in with, you know, there's a minute 30 to go here in the second. But he will be asking them to keep faith, you know, keep working for that uh, next best look and, and trust the process. McLean, a nice wrap round pass back to his inside partner Oliver. Good ball movement by St. Patrick, but that's going to be short, but straight into the hands of Oliver. And sometimes you just got to be lucky. Shot well short, bounce off the corner of the backboard, straight into a wide open Oliver's hands, and he was happy to collect the two. Yeah, Klosch and Skellig have switched to a 2-3 there about halfway through the quarter, and to try and combat that uh, internal play from St. Pat's Academy, but it hasn't worked out as much because they've given up too many offensive rebounds. Just step the end line there, checking back in to Shane Casey for Colossus Gelga, and there's under a minute to go now in this first quarter, seven point lead. It's been a while since Colossus Gelga scored, and St. Patrick's Grammar School have really taken advantage of that, building a seven point lead here. Nice pass back out to Zagrakalis. Can't make the three, and with 35 seconds to go, a score much needed here. Sheehan looks to get all the way to the basket. Can't finish with his right hand, Tian, so I keep calling him Sheehan, and he's going to pick up a foul, which is going to be his first. So first foul on Sean Tian. So the second foul of the quarter, so there's no penalty. 25 seconds to go. So St. Patrick's Graham will have a chance to hold for the last shot. McLennan to Fanthorpe, kicks it out to Oliver. Oliver's pass is tipped by Tian with 9.2 to go in the quarter. Niagara Carlos to Fanthorpe, clocks down to five. Tipped again by Tians and a good job of getting hands on ball. So 3.8 is now to go. Oliver will have an open three. And tip back up and in. And exactly what Pat was talking about, the lack of rebound in there. The tip in on the buzzer from Banthorpe and that gives St. Patrick's Grammar School a half-time lead of 34 to 25.
So we're back underway here in the second half of the under 19 B boys All Island League Schools Cup uh, Schools Final. Sorry, second time I made that mistake. And saw in first half. Kloshner Skelga led early, but a great end to the second quarter by St Patrick's Grammar School. Pat, what do you see in the score in there at half time? Yeah, O'Connor was big for Klosch and Skellige in that first quarter. He had 11 points. Um, did a very poor second quarter offensively. They only scored four with uh, Cahal O'Shea and Ronan Clifford getting two each. But on the other side then, you have to say, McLenaghan was just growing into the game. He had uh, eight points in that first half. And then Finton Oliver and uh, Regis Zagrikalis both had 10. So they're the leading scorers for St. Pat's Academy. A much needed three point shot made there by Sean Tian. Things are starting to get away from them, chain 11. It's back down to eight now. Zagokalis will put up a three himself, doesn't go. And eventually grabbed by O'Connor. He gets it forward to Galvin. This time Tian decides not to shoot. Good choice because he gets it straight back for three, doesn't go. Great rebound. And he's fouled as Ty O'Connor gets the rebound, goes up, and he'll go to the line for two shots. that one in Pat they need a little bit more from him he had a great start to the game he's gone a bit quiet of late though yeah St. Pat's Academy have done a good job of being aware of where he is the whole time as we see him get a good block there no no sorry that was Tehan um, and here he is attacking down the other end that doesn't drop for him but he needs to stay like that he needs to stay aggressive he needs to stay looking for the ball as we see Tehan knock down a three from about four feet outside the three-point line huge shot second three of this second half for Sean Tian, back to a four point game. Nice give and go. Float that doesn't go for Banthorpe. And here's Tian again. This time he's going to look to attack the basket. Nice inside pass. Good block from Oliver. And Clifford couldn't put in a second shot. And Banthorpe with a chance to punish him, which he does with a nice reverse layup. Inside pass, nice foul line jump shots, no good for Murphy. And McLean cleans up the boards, we'll get it to Oliver, and here's with Zagricalis. Donahue inside to Oliver. Oliver out to Zagricalis, he launches a three, doesn't go, and it tipped into the hands of Galvin. Galvin to Tian. Tian to a cut in O'Connor and a great finish at the basket and a good start for O'Connor and we're going to get a timeout here call for St. Patrick's as Matthew McLean wants to talk things over. Four fifty-two to go in the third quarter. Good start for Kolosnia Skelga. They were down eleven. Pat got it back to within four from a couple of nice baskets. But there's 
one back for Fanthorpe, but very much still in the game here. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's that man O'Connor and Tehan who have been the two main offensive threats for them at the start of this second half. Um, you have to say Fantorp has been really good for uh, St. Pat's Academy as well. Crowd were calling for a foul because Tehan tripped. Unfortunately, Don, he didn't learn from that and put a little bit too much aggression in and gets called straight away for the foul after already alerting the referees to the fact that they maybe missed one. Here is O'Connor to Tian in the corner. Baseline drive for O'Shea. And O'Shea uses his body well, finish off the glass. And much like the first quarter, we've a really good even game here with both teams playing well. Yeah, the switch to man-to-man -to -man for both teams has opened things up a little bit offensively, so it's interesting to see now who will take most advantage of it. Seen that running hook already once today for McLean, and this time it just rolled out. And here comes O'Connor. Ooh, there's an open layup there, passed out by Galvin. Might have been better off going up with that one. But here comes Agricalis. Fansorpe to McLean. Dago Carlos will take that three. Well, that looked good from our angle, but just a tad short. Sheehan, a good defense from Donaghy. And great steal from Dago Carlos. Yeah, foul from behind by Ty O'Connor. Ty O'Connor, that's his second personal foul. And Ronan. Clifford will check in for Klosner Skelga and give William Galvin a break. The scoreboard is flashing two personal fouls for O'Connor, but they put up three fouls down below us at the table, so not quite sure which is which, but if it's three fouls, Pat, which they've just put up now, three fouls, so it's a bit of an issue. Yeah, and, and he's somebody they'll need to protect a little bit. Uh, I'm just looking at the scoreboard here as well, and only one score went up on that free throw, so I'm not sure, is it 41 or 42? It's gone up there now, so it's got a 43-38 on the main scoreboard. Just readjusted. He got there. So five point lead, 250 to go. Nice handle by O'Shea. And he beautifully puts the ball up off the backboard and in for two. Cuts it to a three point game. This Fansorp. McLean uses his size to create a bit of space. Fansorp again, but a lot of Klosser Skeller bodies in that key there. Again, I think it was Tehan who got a little tip on that as he was going by. Sagra Carlos, Oliver. Sagra Carlos throws it up to Oliver, but not enough space, and Donny can't keep it in, so it'll be end line ball. Close to the scale, they, lead, uh, they trail by three with 2.16 to go in the third quarter. And Zagor Carlos, oh, he's unlucky there. He's stolen that one away. That foul could have gone either way. It's gone against Zagor Carlos, and it will be Klosner Skelga ball. Gets his second as well. Just over two minutes to go now. Klosner Skelga will be looking to try and get a score here. They don't want to give St. Patrick's a run like they did at the end of the fur at the end of the second quarter. Clifford, oh wait, the hope for a nice finish. One point game. Nice screen from Oliver. McLean is open on three point nine. He thinks about it for a little bit. Don't know why he thought about it. Because that never looked like doing anything but going in the hoop. As he salutes his uh, crowd all in their smart blazers over there on the far side. 
Again, nice finish inside from Carl Shea. And we see a bit of a role reversal. Pat, it's St. Patrick shooting threes and making them. And the scale got scored inside. Yeah, that's what making this such a, an exciting game, Matt. It's um, nice to see the skill set of, of both teams being fully shown. And there we see another three for St. Pat's from Steve Donaghy. That doesn't go, but great rebound inside from O'Shea, and he's fouled, and he'll go to the line for a chance for a three-point play. Foul's gone on 14, that's Agricalis. That's going to be his second foul. It's actually his third foul, so he's come out of the game there, and he's been replaced by... Number seven, Aiden Harney, who's checked in for the first time. And there's a tip in there. 49-47, two-point game. 48 seconds to go. McLean goes inside, but can't grab it. Eventually, it's cleaned up by Murphy. 30 seconds in the quarter, Clifford to the basket, can't finish. And Oliver with a nice pass to Lee Donaghy all the way to the basket. That one's too strong though. And we're going to go out of bounds, neither referee has pointed anywhere yet. I think he's waiting to see who claims the baseline and decides it's their ball. I think they've given it to St. Pat's. So they'll talk it over here. So, after everything, St. Pat's ball, 19.7 seconds to go in the quarter. Two-point lead for Pat's, another three from McGlinnon. Swished his last one, and that one's just fumbled out of bounds by Murphy. Pat, after the Skelga struggled to score in the last quarter, they've come back this quarter, so I suppose going into the final quarter, if it stays similar to what we've got now, both coaches will be fairly happy going into the last one. Well, I think uh, particularly St. Patrick Academy would probably be a bit disappointed they've let Colossus and Eskela get back into it so much here in the second half, but John Tien will be happy definitely going into the fourth and within a score or two, ready to go. And that's going to cheer up Matthew McLean. Big three, puts the lead back to five and a steal, but don't get a chance to get a, a shot off. So at the end of the third, it's 52 St. Pat's, 47 Colossus and Eskela. So we're ready for the start of the final quarter. Just a little bit of housekeeping going on downstairs at the scorer's table. I think we're talking about the fouls, but either way, 52-47. St. Pat's 
are leading. We were first here, Pat. Video replays in the National Basketball Arena. To check in the footage, I presume to see who the last foul was on. I think they might have made him. There might be a bit of confusion about a foul. So referee is talking to all ten players. Ah, do you know what? I think we might be talking about the free throw that was tipped in. I'm not sure if any of this is strictly legal, but... Okay, we've got to the bottom of that. The free throw that Pat had mentioned earlier when they scored two, only one went up on the scoreboard, so that's now been adjusted. It's 53-47 going into this final quarter. Six-point lead for St. Patrick's. A nice pass inside from McGlennon to Oliver. They've worked really well together throughout this game. And it's a seven-point lead. Oh, nice basket all the way to the hoop for Austin Murphy. Keeps within touch. Six-point game, 55-49. Tipped away from Tian. He's giving it back, tries to find a bit of space. 7-18 to go. Back to Tian. O'Connor, three doesn't go and it's Fansorp to McLean McLean gets a bit of space gets the hoop doesn't go rebounded tipped by Oliver but only into the hands of Sean Tian and again reach around the back still out to stand and here's Fansorp he goes all the way to the hoop and he's fouled and he'll go to the line for two shots
and so made. 56 49, seven point lead. Clifford to the basket, that one bounced out. And here's McLean. Beautiful pass for McLean, but Donahue couldn't finish at the hoop. And Gloucester Skelton had another chance, and Pian banked that three in, and they needed that one. Yeah, that's Tehan's fifth three-pointer of the game. Kept them in the game a bit here, they needed that. They were starting to fall behind a little bit here. Four-point lead, six minutes to go. Zagreb Carlson tried to answer that. Bounced out McLean, who's coming into the, the game more and more as the game's gone on. Him and Oliver dominating the rebounds here. And that's going to be the fourth foul on Tygo Connor as we're going to get a timeout for teams to talk it over. Welcome back, six minutes to go, four-point game, end-line ball for St. Patrick's Grammar School. Donaghy, nice pullback from Donaghy, but can't finish it. Good rebound from O'Shea, gets the foul. Yeah, O'Shea was big last quarter for Colossian Skelliga's run, he had nine points. Um, so he was, he was the leading scorer for Colossian Skelliga in that, in that quarter. To the full court pressure from St. Pat's. And the St. Pat's crowd have they found their voice, but they found their feet. They got away with the back court there. Oliver to Fansorp, who's done a great job of running things today for St. Patrick's Grammar School. Spins into the lane. That one's just bounced out. And Tian, who's done likewise. Well, his team here, Tian with a runner in the lane, doesn't go, rebounded by the man Pat just mentioned, O'Shea, but this time can't finish, and Zagwakalis grabs the rebound, and here's Fantorp. Gonna say he got away with the travel, but he didn't get away with the travel. Again, some full court pressure here. Tian getting a high screen. Cross court pass to the open man Murphy. Three is up by O'Connor. Doesn't go, rebounded by O'Shea and he's fouled. Fouls on Donaghy. That's his third. And this time it will be coach John Tian calls a timeout for Klosner Skelga.
Welcome back, five minutes to go. Pat, really anyone's game, five, uh, four point lead for St. Patrick's who've kind of been the dominant team, but as a three goes up and would have made a different story. Still anyone's game, do you think here? Yeah, I do. You know, both teams have made runs, shown they're capable of it. So I think uh, Klaus and Skellig are definitely not out of this. There's plenty of time on the clock and, and it's only a two score game. So uh, yeah, I think we could be in for an exciting finish depending on who starts the next run. The offensive foul there, McLean and his call for a push off. It's going to be his third personal foul. But he's done well. He picked up those two fouls, I think, in the first two, three minutes of the game. A great job of playing without fouling since. So I'm sure it won't be too much of a problem. He's picked up his third now. Washington Skellige might have got away there with a little bit of dancing on the uh, baseline. Wondering that myself. Mm. Referees do tell you different things about how much movement they allow in the baseline, but they always tell you after they haven't called anything. This full court pressure is uh, taking Klosha Skellige out of a little bit of rhythm, forcing him to low shot clock options. Murphy. 14 calls, they tend to shoot, so Connor nowhere to go. To throw up fadeaway, rebounded by Clifford, but he's gonna have to get it up quickly, stolen away by Zago Carlos. And we've got a foul. Gonna go against Austin Murphy. With his first personal foul. So 4-11 to go. Four point lead. Stolen away by Tian. And interesting enough there. Fanthorpe stopped and thought he heard a whistle. I thought I heard a whistle. But definitely no referees had their whistle near their mouth. It must have come from somewhere else. Two point game though. Do you hear a whistle, Pat? I did, yeah. Yeah, I think it came from the crowd. It definitely wasn't the same whistle as the referees, and, but it definitely did make Fansorp stop. And we're going to get a timeout here. Two point game, 56 54. So Joseph Fantop at the line, gets that one to roll. 3.43 to go in the final quarter. Three point lead, St. Patrick's Grammar School, make that four point lead. Again, the full court pressure. O'Shea, all the way to the glass, can't get it, good rebound from Clifford and Oliver, and we're gonna jump ball, and on the possession now, it's gonna be Kolosh the scale gap ball. Oh, 
O'Connor on the baseline. Tough jump shot. It's short, but straight into the hands of Clifford. So that's one apiece. Oliver had one like that in the first half. So all bounces out. Two point game. Fanthorpe, Zagra Carlos tries to get it inside the McGlennon. He does. No space. And well defended that time by Crossner Skelga. Murphy gets it long, but good defense from Oliver. Stops O'Shea at the basket. Fanthorpe into the key, kicks out Zagokalis. He'll take a three. Oh, big three from Zagokalis. Puts him up five, Pat. That was huge. Yeah, massive with, you know, just over two and a half minutes to go. Scores have been uh, slow to come by for Klaus and Eskelega since St. Pat's went into this full court man with the last uh, probably three minutes or so. So they need to get a score here as we see. I think Possession will be with them on that tie-up. They really need to get a, a couple of stops quickly and get some scores because St. Pat's Academy have shown that they can make those three-pointers. Two fifteen to go in this final quarter. And the 19 B All Island Schools Cup uh, League final. Bantorp take the jump shot he was given there, but missed and rebounded by O'Shea. Is Tian to O'Connor. This time he doesn't take the three, puts the ball on the floor, doesn't get the roll, but gets the rebound. That is good. Gets a chance for a three-bird play of a different kind as he'll go to the line for a bonus. Fouls and go on 14, I think, which will be his fourth. It is, so that foul goes on Zagor Carlos. That's his fourth foul. And we're back to a two-point game. Danthorpe to McLeanan, inside to Oliver, back to McLeanan, he tries to get the key, nice pass inside to Donaghy, we're going to get a travel there, didn't bounce the ball, and we're going to get a timeout for coach John Tian. Okay, so welcome back, 137 to go. That was St. Patrick's final timeout. They're leading by two at the moment. With a bit of pressure here, they're gonna have to get that over. And McLennan stole it away. And they did call an eight second call. No firm possession. Banthorpe leading by two, a minute 20 to go. Donaghy, Zagracalis, he made the last big three, but St. Patrick's. He was a 24, well, actually a 14 second violation. The ball was put in from the front court, only 14 seconds to shoot.
Nice out of bounds play there. And a step through and just can't quite finish as O'Shea had a chance there and we're going to get a foul call. That could be... Well, it's got a number 11 actually, so it's Clifford, uh, Roland Clifford. That'll be his first foul. But both teams in penalties will walk on the floor for two shots. Pat, such a close game. And we're going to get a timeout here with John Tien taking his final timeout with a minute six to go, trailing by two. So 106 to go from Patrick's Grammar School. But a good second half. And they're leading with a chance to go up three with Oliver at the foul line. And he ignores the noise coming from the Skelga. Band. Pat, both coaches had all the talking they can do now. Now it's down to the players with a minute six to go. Yeah, still anybody's game, I feel, you know. Um, it's only a one-score game to tie it up. As we see, McLenaghan with a great steal and finish. That could be the decider. Huge turnover there. Trailing by three, now trailing by five. And another steal by Zagokalis. And the clock hasn't started below us. It's just started now, so it'll be interesting to see how much time they take off it. I'm going to get two shots as a month, all the madness. That was the fifth foul on Tygo Connor. It'll be Zago Carlos to go to the line for two shots. Massive free throws from St. Pat's and Zagrakalis as he puts his team up seven. Sheehan launches a three. That one needs to go in. It's still a chance. Oh, in and out. And it's going to be end line balls. It'll say the scale that ball. for three doesn't go tipped out to get another chance doesn't go again kicked out again and a travel call good defense and Pat that could well be it there yeah I think so they needed that score there you know unless they can get a steal here immediately and score in the next three or four seconds full court pressure fans up Evades that, gets it to Zagrakalis. To Oliver. We've got a foul. Going to go against Shane Casey. And that's going to be two shots. Pat, really enjoyable game, both teams. 
scored well throughout. What was the big difference in the end if uh, St. Pat's are going to hold on to this and uh, lift this trophy? Yeah, I think the switch to man-to-man -to -man and, and being aggressive full court with about five and a half minutes to go here in this fourth quarter took Colossian and Skellig out of a bit of their rhythm and I think it really was the difference. Um, McLenaghan was crucial in limiting second attempts and he was a big presence any time they tried to go inside and then I thought the guards Van Tork and uh, Zagreb Callas did really, really well as well. McLean and Wisely brings it back out. He'll foul go to the line. Checking in over the last break was number two, Simon McGurk for St. Patrick's Grammar. One from two to ice the game with a ten-point lead. O'Shea, who had a great third quarter, doing exactly those kind of scores. Gets the two, but time is going to run out here. Three seconds to go. Fonte holds the ball. And after a thoroughly enjoyable under-19 B final, it's St. Patrick's Grammar School come out on top of Kolosna Skelga after a thrilling fight. They're going to win this one on a scoreline of 69-61. We'll go to the presentation shortly and we'll leave you with that, but next up, running a little bit late, is the under-19C girls final, St. Nathies against Kinsale. Join us for that in about 10, 15 minutes time. But for now, myself and Pat, after a fantastic game that sees St. Pat's lift in the under-19 B All-Ireland Schools League final. Enjoy the presentation and we'll be back with you for the next game shortly. <laughs> 